Hey everyone, so I had an interesting conversation with my twins and I shared it with a friend of mine and she was really encouraged by it. So I figured that I would share with you all too. So my kids and I, we were actually leaving the store and someone had walked up to us to ask us to sign a petition. And that's not surprising because there are petition signature collectors all over the place because the people are trying to collect signatures to put um, abortion on the Constitution, which will effectively legalize abortion through birth and do a lot of other things, right? And um, and so my kids were like, well, you know, what is going on? And so we started to talk about the topic of abortion. And so we, I spoke about it in kid-friendly terms, you know, saying like, you know, a woman is pregnant and the baby's in her belly. And what this does, what this petition would do is allow the baby to be taken from her belly before um, it's born and which would effectively kill it. And they said, well, why would anyone want to do that? Like, why is anybody collecting signatures for something like that? They're like, I mean, what's going on? I'm like, well, some people are just evil, but other people believe that they're doing the right thing. And they were kind of like, well, how would anybody think that that's the right thing? And I said, you know, because people are deceived. And I said, this is why it's really important to read your Bible for yourself, to know the word of God yourself, because sometimes people can take scriptures and twist them to, uh, fit something that God doesn't necessarily intend. And I said, um, so you really have to be on guard against deception. And then we started to talk about what God says about children. And so I'm like, you know, children are a heritage from the Lord. I said, God had a purpose and has a purpose and plan for you before you're placed in your mother's womb. He knew you before you're placed in your mother's womb. Like, you know, all the things that we see in um, Psalm 139. And then also what we talked about was Ephesians 2.10 about how we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works created from the beginning of time, right? That we shall walk on, walk in them. And I said, so before God even placed you in my womb or before he even placed a baby in any mom's womb he already knew them and assigned a unique purpose and plan for them and so we were able to talk about all of those different things you know and um it was a really interesting um conversation and they were like but you know but why would anyone want to do this like you know but still like what's going on and i said you know uh, and they were talking about the petition collectors. And I said, you know, things are very loud right now. Um, and I said, the thing is, I said, darkness thrives in light. I mean, darkness thrives without light. That's what I was trying to say. Darkness thrives without light. And one of my kids said, well, why don't people speak up? And I thought that that was really interesting, right? And then I, it really gave me an opportunity. I started to really think, like, how do I explain this? And so I said, sometimes people don't speak up because of fear. And I said, people can be fear of losing friends. People can be afraid of losing influence. People can be afraid of losing their jobs. People can just be afraid of people speaking negatively about them. I said, there's a lot of reasons why people don't speak up about things like this. And then... And then I started to, you know, use Bible stories to explain my point. And I said, think about it. Like, where was Gideon when the angel of the Lord called him to um, overthrow the Midianite army? And I said, he was hiding, right? He was hiding because he was afraid of the strength of the Midianites. And then I said, because he, you know, he had forgot about God because his problems and the people of Israel's problems were so great. They started to doubt if God was really there for him. So he was hiding, right, to escape some of the things that were going on. And I said, what about the people of Israel? Why did they end up wandering? And they were like, well, disobedience. I said, yeah, it was disobedience. But I said, one of the other things is, is that when uh, Moses sent out the spies to look, spy out the promised land, the, the spies came back with an evil report that was so focused on the giants and the opposition, it caused them to not trust God. And then they led the people into rebellion and the people wanted to go back to Egypt, back into slavery. And they ended up wandering in the desert for 40 years. And I said, and what about David? Remember when David showed up um, with, you know, with Goliath, when he showed up where the Israelite army was stationed and people were hiding, they were afraid of facing Goliath. 
And I said they were so focused on the size of Goliath that they forgot who God was. And I said, all of these things have a common thing. When we focus on the opposition and when we focus on, you know, the bigness of a problem, we can forget who God is. And I said, sometimes people don't speak up for what's right because they're looking at the backlash and not who God is. And so it just was like, it was so profound, right? As I began to just explain that to my kids because my own heart was convicted, right? And my own heart was convicted because, you know, I have a whole platform where I encourage single moms facing unexpected pregnancies to encourage them to learn how to land well. But ultimately, if they're on the fence about choosing life or abortion, to be able to give them the hope and the courage to be able to move forward and choose life for their kids. And I realized that I tend to talk about after, right, a lot. And not necessarily about having the hope to be able to choose life. And I realized that even in my own ministry, even in the work that I do, I can speak up more. I can speak up for the unborn. I can speak up and encourage these women by sharing my story about how I almost chose abortion. For my twins, I actually picked up the phone to be able to call an abortion clinic, but they didn't answer the phone. And it gave me enough time to be able to make that decision to choose life for my twins. And I just realized that at that ill moment as I was talking to my kids that I can do more. And I shared that with a friend of mine and she was so encouraged about that because there had been things on her heart that she felt like God was calling her to her more, but she was afraid. And I think that just as the people of Gideon were afraid, um, the people of Israel were afraid uh, with going into the promised land, uh, just like how the Israelite army was afraid when facing Goliath, we all can be afraid of certain things that God is calling us to do, whether it's to speak out against injustice, whether it's to speak up for the unborn, the people who literally don't have a voice, one of the most, some of the most vulnerable people in our society, right? God might have different ministries on your heart, but if we don't speak up for the things of God, then who is, right? And we have to remember that darkness thrives in the absence of light. Light. So when the people of God are silent, then only darkness is allowed to continue. And so one of the other things that I thought was so profound about the conversation was um, my kids were asking like, well, you know, is um, everybody evil? Who is trying to collect petition signatures. And I'm like, no, some people are just deceived, right? Which is why you need to read your Bible, know your Bible, and don't allow anyone to tell you what it says. You know it for yourself, so you're not deceived. But then I also talked about the women seeking abortions. And they were like, but why would a mom ever want to do that to her baby? And I said, fear. It's fear, you know? Um, I said, because when a woman gets pregnant, there's a lot of things that are going through her mind. And if she begins to focus on her problems and not on God, then she can succumb to fear. Just like what we saw in Gideon, right? Just like we saw in uh, the children of Israel right before they went into the promised land. They were so focused on the giants that they said that they were grasshoppers in the sight of the giants. And they had no idea that God had already given them victory. They had no idea what they later found out after 40 years later, after they crossed over and they were talking to Rahab, you know, 40 years after that God had already taken the courage away from the giants. And all the people had to do was walk in because the, and, you know, the, the, the giants were already defeated. They didn't, just like the people of Israel, the Israelite army, when David faced Goliath, people were so focused on Goliath that they forgot who God was. But David had a relationship with God. David knew God and David knew that he had the victory because God was on his side. And so there are so many things that we're called to do for the kingdom of God as people of God that we don't because of fear, right? And fear can cause us to forget the bigness of God. So getting back to these women, right? I was explaining to them, I said, you know, there's just, you know, the people can, these women can be faced, be focused on 
the things that they're afraid of with continuing their pregnancy. And I didn't go into this with them, but you know, these were certain things that I was dealing with when I was pregnant unexpectedly. I was afraid for my finances. I was afraid that I, I didn't know if I was going to have a good support system. I didn't know what it meant for my hopes and dreams because I literally just quit my job to become a full-time entrepreneur. And so I didn't know what it would mean for, you know, my friend circle. I had no idea how my life would change and it scared me. And that is what um, sent me to call, pick up the phone. And then I was dealing with a whole lot of pressure from their dad about having an abortion and telling me everything that I couldn't do and how everything was going to be so horrible if I decided to have my kids. And so that fear nearly consumed me. And so I believe that that same fear is causing people to be silent on things that are at the heart of God. But I also believe that that fear is causing people to be stuck and stagnant in life and not fulfill their destiny. Because when we focus so much on the fear, there is an absence of light and that light is God, right? And when we're focusing on the fear, we're not focusing on God. And when we aren't focused on God, it can cause us to shrink back high, not speak up or not move forward or to make decisions based upon fear. And so I wanted to encourage you today to say a couple of different things. Number one, if you feel God tugging on your heart for something, speak up, speak up. Because he's, I think in this time, he's really raising up people of the kingdom to be able to counter a lot of stuff that we see going on in this world that is not of him. And so what we want to do is to make sure that we Rate that we speak up to be able to give the next generations a world of hope, right? Because again, darkness thrives in the absence of light. And if we allow the conversations to be one sided, then there isn't balance and God's truth isn't allowed to go forth, right? Because people are being silenced. And the other thing is, is when I think about single motherhood in general, single moms are, um, tend to be people who have fewer choices and not always right not definitely not always and so we definitely are speaking up helps to create a better community right for people who might not have the option to be more flexible with things like where they send their kids to school and a number of different things so it's really important if you're a person of Christ, right? To be able to speak up and advocate even in the school systems, right? Let your voice be heard. And so don't be afraid. Allow the light of the, the Lord to flow through you. But the other thing I want to speak to is that if you're a single, if you're a woman facing an unplanned pregnancy, I get it. There is a lot of fear around there and there's a lot of hopelessness that you can feel in those situations, but don't lose hope have faith, right? Because your faith will get you through it. My faith is what got me through it, right? And I'm so happy that I did not abort my kids. And um, I just want to give you that same hope and that same encouragement to be able to keep on going. And um, I really hope that this has encouraged you. I really hope that this, um, you know, helps to just encourage you to speak up um, we're all called to different things, right? But we all have a unique calling, right? And as believers in Christ, it's to advance God's kingdom on earth. So whatever your calling is, if you're afraid, I encourage you to speak up. And if you're a single woman who just have, who happened to be watching this video about speaking up, but you find yourself in a unplanned pregnancy, I just want to encourage you to keep on going, to choose life, and to be able to trust that God will get you through and to trust that he will bring the resources available to you that you need because literally that is what he did for me. I did not know how things were going to work out for my finances. I did not know how things were going to work out for my support system. I did not know how it was going to work out for my career, but it did. And so I just want to encourage you in these things as well. And if you are someone who... And if you are definitely an unexpected single mom, I encourage you to check out my book, Navigating the Impossible, A Survival Guide for Single Moms. 
from pregnancy through the first year of motherhood. Um, it is available on Amazon and literally that book walks you through uh, what you need to do in terms of landing well in terms of single motherhood. And I share things that I learned on my single motherhood journey from pregnancy through the first year of mother in hopes that that will encourage you and give you a blueprint for what you need to do. And then I included things I wish I knew, right, that I learned the hard way. So that way, um, and I wrote it to make your life easier um, and to give you hope as well that there is a future that god does have a purpose and plan for both you and your child and to trust him at every stage of the journey so thank you so much for tuning in i encourage you to like this video love it hit subscribe and share it with a friend um thanks again for tuning in have a good one bye